Okay, greetings. Welcome to uh, another episode of uh, Crime Pays a Botany Dozen Gonzo Botany Journal. Gonzo Brazilian Botany Journal. Uh, I think it's July 9th or 10th. I don't know what date it is. Either way, you can see we got this massive uh, hillside carved out right here of uh, very iron-rich rocks, like most of the rocks seem to be here. Very weathered, very iron-rich, and uh, full of little uh, quartz pebbles or sometimes big quartz boulders. We're on the east side of the uh, Cejado Sipo, a mountain range that goes north south we're on the uh, atlantic side of the mountain range right here gets a little bit more moisture not as dry a little bit cooler this time of year too the uh the west side's a little bit drier and a, a little bit warmer even though it's winter you can see we got the uh, pretty thick forest right here we're going to take our attention over here to this uh, pea you can see the road this red dust covers everything here and has been for the last few hundred miles but check out this uh this red pea Another resupinate pea, that is the uh, banner, actually the, the inflorescence nods, so it's not resupinate. The banner's still uh, in the back, but the uh, inflorescence just nods over. Natanes. Look at that color on it, though. If the, if the, uh, if the leaves weren't covered in this iron-rich red dust, you'd be able to see them better, but they are trifoliate. And uh, let's see what the underside looks like. You got that uh, indumentum, that velvet, which of course is a adaptations to a dry environment so it must be uh, hot enough here in the summer that even though it rains every day it can still dry out pretty quick and uh, you got to have some uh, some trichomes on there to limit the uh, the ev transpiration of evapotranspiration of moisture look at that look at that inflorescence Jesus Christ just a bunch of hot pink little pea flowers on a nodding scape so this pea is evidently hummingbird pollinated, and that means it's probably got a ton of nectar at the base of those flowers. And you can see the ants are uh, attracted to it too, obviously. So it's got a lot of, basically, you know, just offering a lot of sugar water up when those ants are, are uh, stealing it. Look at how those wing petals look on the inside of that uh, banner petal. That banner petal creates a little chapel, a little sanctuary. I dissected a flower right there. You could see the uh, stamens and the style behind them. All curled up in that flower. Got a bunch of pollen on them, too. Only a few few plant families bleed latex. Euphorbiaceae, Apostinaceae, and Sabataceae. And maybe uh, maybe a few more, but you have the latex and those fruits. So no flowers. And those, uh, those fruits might even be edible. Who knows? Right here you got a vining Asteraceae. Probably in uh, tribe Eupatorii. I'm guessing from uh, the look of those styles. Maybe a Macania which uh, you get a few species in the uh, southeastern United States as well. But this one is extremely fuzzy. Look at the stems. Hairs all over it. Hairs on the leaves. Adaptations to this uh, subtropical, seasonally dry environment. God, this pea is hilarious. This is a climber. You can see, look, it's even up there. Ten meters above the ground. Some's driving those pollinators nuts. I can't even see the flowers, but I hear a lot of buzzing. Okay, just came on a brief waltz through some forest uh, to a drier slope. Looks pretty interesting, like it's probably got some good stuff. Look at all the iron in that water. Is it iron and tannins or what? Anyway, we're going to uh, cross up there, see what we can find. See if there's any uh, cool uh, dryland bromeliads, cacti, other stuff. You can see this, I guess it's a sedge everywhere. That blue uh, cyperaceae, remember we've been seeing? Oh yeah, you can see it right there. This cool imbricate leaved melastone. God damn it. Get a flower on it. There you go. Look at this bizarre imbricate leaved thing. Ericoid foliage. Almost looks like it's straight out of South Africa because you get the same vegetative types down there. But it's a melastome, of course. You could see those very bizarre stamens with those anther connectives. What the shit is going on there? You got two different kinds of anther connectives? I don't know, man. This family's so nuts. What these what these flowers do with their stamens, what the the members of Melastomataceae do with their stamens, almost looks like a little bag. Like you got some kind of bellows mechanism, like Axinea does that. But you got those poor anthers still that eject a jet of pollen onto a, a bee's abdomen. I'm, I'm standing here sweating like a pig, trying to figure out what the hell's going on with this species of Melastome. It's got two different kinds of anthers. It took me a minute because it was kind of a clusterfuck of stamens in there, but I was able to dissect it enough. Flower's kind of gone anyway. You can see the uh, old petals. The petals get some uh, uh, destruction. Anyway, you could see uh, two different kinds of stamens right there. 
That's insane. This family is so weird, man. It's just got so much in the genetic toolbox in terms of uh, stamen plasticity. Yeah, no idea. One looks like a sickle, the other looks like some sort of, uh, you know, office chair. <laughs> what the shit? Look at that cool velosia of some kind of velosiaceae. Look at that sedge too, that's nice. Look at this thing, look. Velosiaceae, completely dried out, poikilohydric, waiting for moisture. Just like the quote unquote resurrection ferns. There's a nice ankylerium. Just wild. You got those, uh, I assume it's Siagras, those palms. See that we're just walking on a patchwork, on a carpet of that, the poikilohydric velosia. This guy. A nice little palm oasis, the dwarf palms, got some cool cactus here. Sippo series, Arthro series, no idea, maybe Sippo series. Hard to tell though, really. Oh, no, Pelosa series? Or is that an entirely different plant? I think that's an entirely different plant. Just having my mind blown. Look, we got a dryland aeroid, philodendron, species of philodendron. Philodendron adamantinum. You got Velosia everywhere. Ooh, it's getting hot. Get to see what summer's like here. Look at that. Look at that Velosia. God, it's just wild plants. There's the uh, the fruits on it. Now, as we get higher, you can see this landscape of quartz everywhere, and we got these aromantis, Asteraceae. Vernonia tribe, a bunch of pink flowers will eventually emerge out of those white flower heads. There you go, those fruits, that's Kyle Myra, which is uh, no leafless right now, obviously. Look, what is this? Some sort of damn composite, some other weird aracoid composite? Asteraceae sure looks like it. Not flowering yet. Uh, this habitat is incredible. See all the, see? Rocky arid microsite surrounded by forest. Tons of velosia. Look at this philodendron. Loving its rack home. It's just see, it's rooted into the ground there where it's got a lot of moisture, but it's got enough wax on its leaves to uh, hang out through the dry season, the winter, uh, in full exposure to sun. Look at those abscission scars on that uh, stem, too. Oh, shit, who's in? Oh, that's just the velosia. Landscape of Quartz, just like the book City of Quartz by Mike Davis. Not really. R.I.P. Mike Davis. There's that damn ass there again. Who the shit is this? <laughs> I have no idea. This whole trip is just going to be me stumbling around in the cut saying, who the shit is this? That cacti didn't pull through. That cactus. There's, look at that Velozia. God damn. Looking like a damn Dracaena. Oh, here's an orchid. Not like I uh, have uh, enough knowledge in orchidaceae to be able to tell you what the shit that is, but we'll figure it out. Just uh, growing, see the nice pseudobulbs at the base growing on these rocks. God, it's gotta be hot here in summer. Look how black that rock is. All just lichen. Look at the fruits on this. Look at the fruits on this. What is that, Pelosa series on this cactus? They look like little uh, clenched buttholes. Isn't that obscene? Caliandra all over the ground. That, uh, or maybe it's Camacrista. I think it's Camacrista. I haven't seen a flower, but I remember seeing uh, that same plant somewhere else. A tree daisy, the tree aromatis again. Check out this Camacrista. Look at the phyllotaxy on it. Look at the, look at the leaf patterning. It's incredible. Super cool. God damn it. Look at it. And then there's those. Yellow Camacrista flowers. Look into my uh, Cesalpinoid perianth. You can see those brown anthers in there. Right next to this piece of cow shit, we got a cool uh, member of the family Areocalaceae. A dryland Areocalaceae. Papilanthus is the genus there. Look at that rosette. Look at all those trichomes on those leaves. Holy hell. Areocalaceae, of course, is hyper diverse in Brazil. 
probably tons of uh, undescribed species too. All on this quartzitic sand, this white sand. There's that Velosia again too, that's insane. That's totally insane, so cool. Not dead, just dormant. Get a little bit of moisture and it cools down a little bit, I'll come right back to life green up. That's, there's that uh, tree composite again, that tree Bernonia. And uh, right here we got a pretty rare bromeliad, Hollow Cryptanthus negtianus. You can see that little guy. Looking almost like a little Talanzi with those those toothed leaf margins. There's that Velosia or Barbicinia, whatever the shit that is. Absolutely incredible habitat. Look at this. Look at that Helicryptantha. Look at that. Just growing as a chasmophyte next to the philodendron. Dylan knows all the bromeliads. He's he's teaching me. I don't I don't know shit from what I'm looking at. <laughs> Down to genus. And there's no there's very few guides to the botany of Brazil. And what's out there is in Portuguese. But uh, you know, I, I know there's people working on guides, hopefully. Because there's uh, so much diversity here. And still a lot of stuff being studied. A nice clump growing right next to the philodendron. You can see the philodendron experienced some dieback during a rougher times. That must be Barbicinia velosiaceae, whatever it is. God, what a cool little bromeliad. Probably rains every day here in the wet season, but it's those dry winters you got to worry about hanging out through, about hanging tough through. Look at this giant... <laughs> this giant encolerium. Holy hell. Is that my my Cranthoserius? What is that genus? No idea. Damn, what is that? Without flowers, it's oh look, there's like a nice little cave. Nice little place to hang out. Ah. Here we got another orchid, Acianthera Therese, which is actually pretty common in these uh dry rocky outcroppings. You can see just those those leaves, those semi-succulent leaves poking out. Oh, there's like a little seed capsule with its millions of tiny dust-like seeds on it right there. Just got to store it up during summertime, hold out through the winter. All that moisture. Look, we got a little uh, rubioid, rubiaceae, with those uh, blue flowers. I've been seeing this genus, or at least this lineage, quite a bit lots of different variations on this form four petals somewhat tube shaped corolla and a violet color and a somewhat the dense panicle many tiny flowers you can see this one's obviously adapted to a dry environment thin leaves even more interesting at least to me since i'm obsessed with the family is this weird daisy it's a mutisioid almost looks like a very glandular trixis by mutisioid i just mean it those uh the subfamily Mutisioide is a subfamily of Asteraceae. It's got bilabiate, cor florid corollas. You could see them in there. Look at all the hairs on that thing. Look at all the hairs and all the damn glands. Incredible. Smells really good, too. And entirely leafless for about 80% of its length, as you can see right there. Like a lot of stuff ends up being in this, uh, this environment. These are old plants. You can see it's just kind of moved. It's stoloniferous, so it'll, it'll one rosette will... Uh, like that was the inflorescence in there, I guess. It looks like a bird knocked it out or something. And, uh, and then it'll just, it'll technically kind of just keep growing laterally, technically moving along the rock. See, there's old ones there too. Oh, it's so cool. Check out on that leaf blade. It looks like an ant that got uh, colonized by a fungus. I don't know, he just bit down. Oh yeah, look, you could see something sporulating on its head. Is that what that is? No, those are its eyes. Never mind. <laughs> Who knows what happened to little buddy? See that? So this growth point is done, and then it sends out a pup to the side, and that's how it ends up growing laterally. But this individual will die. So it's monocarpic in that sense. All right, just like agaves and, and many other bromeliads, you know, the, the one individual plant will die, but then it'll clone itself and send out a pup. And that's what happened there and there. Velosia. Is there a Barbicini or what? I don't know. Who the fuck knows? But this plant was only described in 2020. It was described, the paper was published during COVID. So this is, for, I mean, prior to that, this is just completely unknown to science, which is wild. And you could see this nice little colony of them here. 
Wonder what critters live inside there. Probably a series of rats, maybe some vipers, maybe some bathrops, maybe some cool spiders. This very old metamorphous, the sandstone. Is it metamorphous? Yeah, it feels kind of soft. Well, it probably is metamorphous. Probably got cooked a little bit. Old philodendron right there. And there's the, uh, how about that guy? Just got hollowed out. You can see the, uh, almost waxy covering of trichomes. Looks like wax, but it's actually trichomes. Oh, that's cool. What a cool species. Oh, fuck. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. We're gonna dip out and uh, see what else we can find. All right, go fuck yourself, bye. So you gotta go back through this scrub. This, uh, really, those fucking Nickelians are not as mean as I thought they would be. Go back through this scrub and then uh, cross through that little bit of uh, forest and come out up on top. So on this, uh, this running, this gently running bubbling brook, we got a species of Utricularia, which of course is all over the world. Carnivorous plant, the bladder wart. There's the flower. Does it have a nectar spur? I can't even see. Yeah, it does. Of course it does. I think they all do. And uh, the base of the plant is in there. Compensating its nitrogen by eating the little critters. Little tiny microscopic critters. That's cool. I wonder if this species has been described. Probably. It's probably a common one. Who knows? I don't know. We're in a cut, so. And here we get another species of Utrick. With a much bigger flower. I wonder who pollinates that. Also got that nectar spur. You can see that a little horn coming out from the bottom of the flower. Got some nice patterning on that uh, landing pad petal too. So probably some kind of bee. Photosynthesizing through the stem. But I don't even see any leaves. There's probably maybe... I can't... I'm not even going to guess. Who the fuck knows? <laughs> Pretty cool though. Here we got another climbing lobeliad. Which uh, you're not going to see in the uh, drier environments. This is certainly on the uh, eastern side of the mountains towards the Atlantic. Siphocampylos is the genus. It's hummingbird pollinated. Obviously the leaves stink because they got toxins in them. Adaptive benefits of, uh, of uh, secondary chemistry to keep uh, the herbivores away. And there's those, those flowers with that uh, little pollen presenter. See the little thing that comes out of that fused anther tube? So the anthers are inward facing and uh, conate, fused into that little that little purplish blue tube. And the top two petals open and that thing comes out and then that little uh, 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 pollen presenter pushes pollen out of there and then once it's bifid like it is now, those two two uh, segments, then it becomes receptive to pollen. You get like a little brush at the base of that thing too. Look at that. 